and not allow it to take you there. I can only imagine. Brothers and sisters, this thing, this thing we're dealing with is real. It is real. Jesus is real. He's, he's, not, he's not like a made-up character. He's not Rudolph. He's not Frosty. They mix him in. They throw him in there with Santa Claus. And then people sit back and after years of fairy tales, make believe, fantasy. Sometimes I believe some folks get him mixed up with the rest. And they lose the reality of this thing. I don't know about Rudolph and, and Santa and and, and all that other stuff but one thing I know Jesus is real he lives and, and just like just like he came the first time he's coming again hallelujah and I could only imagine thank you sister for that song oh hallelujah Praise God. Praise God. Well, I, um, I've been praying. I had a message this morning for tonight. And, um, and then when I, I went home today and I was praying over that message and praying over that message. And, and then something began to move in my spirit. And I said, well, wait a minute. What you doing now, Lord? <laughs> and uh, Brother Thompson uh, he uh, treated me to Starbucks before service tonight, and they were they were playing Christmas songs. And as I was standing there waiting on my my coffee and listening to the carols, I don't know, I just felt extra warm inside. And I got to thinking about all the Christmases of my past, growing up as a child. Christmas has always been a very special time. And as an evangelist, uh, I very seldom preach on themes. Um, the only holiday messages I ever preach are Easter messages. <laughs> so, <laughs> but 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 I couldn't I couldn't get away from this this feeling of love and family. And Christmas and so this being the last Sunday night before Christmas Day I think I'm a I'm just gonna mess around with it a little bit and see what happens that'd be all right praise God I'm, I'm going to be reading from the second chapter according to st. Matthew hallelujah and uh, I'm going to start with uh, verse 9 down to verse 10, just those two. And then I'm going to back up and we're just going to dig into the word and see what happens. Oh, before I forget, let me, let me remind you or let you know something. I brought some CDs with me tonight and some DVDs. I meant to bring them this morning, but... I was just so excited about getting here, I forgot them. <laughs> so I went back home and got them. So I wanted you to know that I went through my, through my collection and, I, and I, I chose what I consider the very, very best that God gave me to preach. And they'll be on display in the back right there, straight down this aisle. After service, if you'd go back there, uh, these would be tremendous Christmas presents, amen, for somebody. But I brought three of them up here with me just to let you know uh, just what's out there. Um, one of the messages I have available is a CD. And the title of this CD is called, My Feet Are In Your Hands. My Feet Are In Your Hands. And it's, it's, 
it's the story of the foot washing. But it's, 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 it's probably different than you ever heard it before. The Lord began to show me some interesting things about what happened that night. And uh, I guarantee you it will really be a blessing to you. Amen. If you purchase this for yourself and then share it with someone else. Amen. Praise God. Brother with the uh, red shirt, would you come up here for a moment? I want you to do something for me. I want you to take this CD. And there's a lady right there, standing right there, looking around like it's not her. Yeah, with the glasses on. Will you give that to her as a gift? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And another CD that's going to be available after service. Um, this is a result of a powerful prayer meeting in Richmond, Virginia, at Brother Forbush Church. Some of his men had invited some preachers to the prayer meeting. And these preachers were from a different denomination. And when they came to that prayer meeting, they felt something they had never felt before. And they went up to Brother Forbush and they said, hey, wait a minute. What is it that's different about you guys? And Brother Forbush said, it's the Holy Ghost. And the preachers looked at each other and they said, but wait a minute. We have the Holy Ghost. And Brother Forbush said, have you ever experienced speaking in tongues as the Spirit give the utterance? And he said, no. He said, well, you don't have the Holy Ghost yet. <laughs> and he said, well, what do we have to do to receive the Holy Ghost? He said, all you have to do is desire it. Do you want it? And they looked at each other and said, yeah. So Brother Forbush pulled those preachers together and his men gathered around. Two of the men stood back. The other one just went up there and said, pray for me. And he prayed and prayed. And God filled this preacher with the Holy Ghost right there in that meeting. The other two preachers was like, hey, we want it too. And they got filled with the Holy Ghost. And with tears in their eyes, they, they said, man, we've been missing out on this all this time. And they said, Brother Forbish, if you don't mind, we want you to be our pastor. And instruct us and help us. And Brother Forbes was like, man. He said, well, gentlemen, um, we're going to have classes. I'm, I'm going to have classes especially for you to answer any questions you have about this, what we believe. And so every Tuesday night, he started these classes. And Brother Forbes called me up and said, Brother Easter, can you help us? I said, what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to prepare a teaching, amen, on these various subjects. And one of those teachings is this CD called speaking in tongues the gift and the gifts there's a difference and there's a lot of people out there in the denominational world don't know what the difference is and they get it all mixed up but if you get this i'm pretty sure you will enjoy listening to it amen and i'm sure to answer a lot of questions for you so this also will be on the table after service amen brother with the red shirt would you do me a favor? Yes, sir. I want you to take this CD right here, and I want you to give it to this young lady on the front row with the scarf around her neck, with her hands going like that. Yes. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Amen. And the last one, and I, I didn't want to bring them all up here, but the last one I want to tell you about is a DVD. And I tell you, you you've If you don't get this DVD, don't, don't get mad at me because you've had your chance. This is a Holy Ghost Crusade night. They asked me to preach a, a, me, they asked me to preach a Holy Ghost Crusade at this conference. And the last night, and I tell you, God blessed so powerfully. And, and this is one DVD I watch a lot myself. God really moved in this service. And um, it's called The Baptism of the Holy Ghost. If you don't get it for yourself, you need to buy this for someone you know that needs the Holy Ghost. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. So, nah, I'm not going to bother you again. I, t I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put this right here. And <laughs> I 
I wasn't done. I, I, what I was going to say, never mind, it's too late now. Man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> well, it'll be available after service. <laughs> after service. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. The gospel according to Matthew in the second chapter. <laughs> Beginning at verse number nine. And Matthew records that when they had heard the king, they departed and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Hallelujah. If I was to give this a title, I'll just call it when they saw the star. When they saw the star. How, how, how are you going to respond. When you see the star. Amen. How, how are you going to. I can only imagine. When you see Jesus with your own eyes. The first time you behold him. When you see the nail prints in his hands. I wonder how are you going to respond. Uh, are you just going to stand still and look? Are you going to are you going to just jump out of your skin? What, what are you going to do? When the man that we sing about, the one that we preach about, the one that we pray to, when we first lay eyes on him. Hallelujah. When they saw the star. God bless you. You may be seated. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with great joy. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with great joy. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with great joy. They rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Oh, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with great joy. Oh, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with great joy. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with great joy. They rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Hallelujah. Tonight, tonight, I'm, I'm not going to do anything uh, special, out of the ordinary, whatever. I think tonight we'll just break open the bread of life. And, and this is a living word. It is holy manna. And there's, there's no other book like the Bible. And, and I want to invite you to, let's break bread together tonight. Amen? Let's just break bread and, and see what God will do. Hallelujah. I want to start in chapter 2 in, in verse number 1. And we're just going to go verse by verse and, and see where the Lord will flow. In, in chapter 2 of verse number 1, it speaks of the night that Jesus was born. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, uh, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men, hallelujah, wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Now, there are all kinds of teaching and thinking and perceptions concerning these wise men. There's one thing we know about them, they were wise. What, what made them wise? Because they had a searching heart. Hallelujah. The verses go on and said these these wise men in another part of the Bible, it, it calls them magi or magi or however you want to pronounce it. M-A-G-I. Amen. They were stargazers. They were men that studied 
the heavens hallelujah whether it was astrology I don't know or whether it was astronomy it could very well be but they had their eyes on the stars and somehow or another, it seemed that these wise men who were not even uh, considered people of God per se, they were Gentiles. They were outside of the covenant. They were aliens to the commonwealth of Israel. They didn't know or have that relationship like the children of Abraham. But yet it seemed they were wiser even than the children of God themselves. Because the people of God were waiting for the Messiah. They were looking for the Messiah. 400 or so years had already passed since the last prophet in the Old Testament. That the prophet uh, Malachi, he, he prophesied that, that uh, the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly appear in his temple. Amen. And so generation after generation, they were waiting for the Lord to come. They knew the Messiah was coming. They knew what the scriptures had prophesied he was coming. The scriptures gave details, amen, of what to look for, the signs of the time. And as these people waited on the Lord and searched for the Lord, it was people that were outside of God's covenant saw it before they did. Isn't that interesting? God's own people were looking for him to appear in a way that he didn't appear. Sometimes God will show up in places you're not expecting him to show up. He don't do everything exactly how you think it ought to be done. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The people of God, they, they were waiting for, for their Messiah to come like, like David of old. They wanted a delivering king. They wanted somebody to usurp the power of Rome and, and set the kingdom of God on the earth right then and there. They were looking for a conquering savior. They was waiting for their Messiah to ride in town on a white stallion. Amen. But Jesus came to town riding on the back of a donkey. Is this your Messiah? They was looking for somebody, amen, to bring their kingdom and force and power. But Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. He, con he confused them because he didn't fit their mold. Let me tell you, you can't put God in a mold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Amen. And as they waited on the Messiah, and this is the thing that we need to be careful of. When God give them signs to look for, the shepherds were in the field. And while they were in this field, a host of angels appeared in the heavens. Why didn't God appear to the scholars why didn't he appear to the philosophers, to the doctors, to the scribes? No, God chose the lowly to reveal himself to. Amen. And the angels appeared to these shepherds and the shepherds were tending their flock and the heavens lit up and they saw these angels and they, and they announced to them, rejoice for today in the city of David is born unto you a savior, which is Christ the Lord those shepherds looked at one another they were probably just absolutely overcome amen with with excitement and fear and seeing this vision in the sky and and they saw the star over the manger where the babe was lying and these shepherds they went to the manger and they stepped in and they saw the infant Jesus and they worshipped him. And they saw jo Joseph and Mary. And, and they just had this incredible experience looking eyeball to eyeball at the Messiah. Now the Bible says that after the shepherds left the manger, they went running through the town telling everybody, we found him. We found him. The one the Bible talked about. The one the prophets prophesied about. The Messiah has come. We have found him. He's a little baby in a manger. And you know what the people did? They wondered and were in awe of their announcement. And not one person went to see for themselves. You know, men have not changed over the years. 
Because even though even today we got signs all around us. Nation rising against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. Pestilence and disease everywhere. Jesus said these signs shall come before my second return. When you see these things that means my deliverance is near. And we see it all around us. This world sees the signs all around us. But you know what they do? They just stand in awe and wonder. Hallelujah. So these shepherds. They've got the visitation and they got the news, but the people just let it slide right on by. You know, I wonder tonight how many of us really, really believe this thing. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus really is coming back. Hallelujah. And so the Bible tells us that that there was there was some wise men in the east uh, history books tell us that they were way across the, the deserts and in the eastern country, in the oriental part of the, of the world, and they saw the star appear in the sky. And they knew that that was a sign that the Messiah had come. And even though they weren't Jews, even though they had no uh, relationship or connection with God, there was something inside of them that drove them to find him for themselves. Now, the scripture says that these wise men, amen, they came from the east to Jerusalem. Now, on your Christmas cards, you find three kings. Three wise men. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell you how many there were. I doubt very seriously it was just three. Why is that? Because these wise men, they traveled across desert land. They traveled across bad lands. They, they traveled and they were very vulnerable to attack and robbery. They had to cross some areas that weren't safe. I don't think it was just three. Especially carrying a cargo of myrrh, frankincense, and gold. They would have been a tasty target for bandits. I, I believe it was a caravan. <laughs> I believe it was a bunch of them. Hallelujah. And they came from the east. How far in the east did they travel? The Bible doesn't say. But if you would just do a little calculation, you would find that it took them almost two years to make their journey from the east all the way across to where Jesus was. Two years. And that's why when they came to Herod, the king inquired of him and said he wanted every child from the age of two years old and down to be killed. So the wise men weren't there at the manger. They came to Jerusalem, verse number two, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Now that's another interesting thing. Where is he that's born king? He, he wasn't to inherit the kingdom. A king would have a son, and his son would be a prince. And then the son would inherit the kingdom from his father, but not with Jesus. Jesus was born king. He was king before he got here. He was king when he was here, and he's going to see the soon coming king coming back again. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so... These wise men, they, they came to Herod inquiring, where is he? Where is he? Herod didn't understand what was going on. He was, what are you talking about? He said, we are looking for the king of the Jews. We've seen the star in the east, and we've come to worship him. Now, when Herod, the king, heard these things, uh, he was troubled. And when the king gets troubled, everybody gets troubled. Amen. Because when that king get upset, he said, off with your head. Your head's coming off. So everybody, when the king was happy, everybody was happy. When the king was upset, everybody was upset. And he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. What caused the king to be upset? Well, because he was a king. He was a 
fleshly king. He was a natural king. Jesus is a spiritual king. And there's only one throne. Two kings. Hallelujah. And they're not going to sit together. Amen. And so there's a war between the flesh king and the spiritual king. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Amen. But in your heart, there's room for one throne. In your heart, there's room for only one to rule. And you got a king in your, of your flesh, and you got a king of your spirit, and they're constantly fighting one another to see who is the one that's going to take the throne. And so that fleshly king rose up. He said, I'm not going to allow no other king but me. And so he inquired of these wise men. Now, verse number four, he had gathered all the chief priests. He gathered all the scribes of the people, and he demanded them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, he's going to be born in Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it is written by the prophet, and thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. They open up the book. They open up all of the testimonies of the prophets. Hallelujah. Isaiah said, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted God with us. He also said, for unto us a son is born, and a child, or a child is born, and a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. All of the testaments, all the prophecies, they begin to open up the book. Hallelujah. And the king was very disturbed. And so Herod, he called the wise men and inquired of them. And he said, I want you to tell me what time did this star appear? No doubt they told Herod two years ago. Amen. And so that old lying devil, he sent them to Bethlehem. Verse number eight. And he said, go and search diligently for the young child. And when you find him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. The devil has no intentions of worshiping God. Amen. He just wanted to find out where he was that he might destroy him. Amen. The devil and God will never sit down at the peace table. The devil and God will never, amen, shake hands and forgive one another. It is spiritual warfare. It was spiritual war then and it's spiritual war tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. So Herod had commanded the wise men find the child. And in verse number nine, when they heard the king, they departed and lo, there it is again, that star. Hallelujah. When they saw that star, it was the same star that they saw in the east. It went before them till it came and stood over the, where the young child was. And when they saw, whew, hallelujah. <sighs> Friend, this is not a made up story. This is not something that we just need to talk about once a year, friend, but this really happened. This really happened when they saw that star. They just weren't excited. They were exceeding joy. They rejoiced with exceeding. It was no just, hey, there go a star, y'all. There go a star. No, no, no. They were exceedingly joyful when they saw that star. It meant salvation it meant deliverance it meant hope for the nation it meant the messiah has come my god what are we gonna do the day we see him face to face <laughs> hallelujah when they saw the star it wasn't enough that they had joy but they had exceedingly great joy you know something? 
the most happiest people on the planet ought to be us. We ought to be the most excited people. We ought to be beside ourselves with joy. I don't know how we can sit after service after service and hear a message. And so, Oh, preacher, you got to really get me going. Oh, preacher, you got to really. No, I don't have to do anything. All I got to do is remember where I was before he came and how I've changed since he came. Hallelujah. He fills me with exceeding great <laughs> oh, you say, come on, brother Easter preacher, boy. Come on, preacher. Hey, man, I'm not the star of the show. I'm not the star of the program. Jesus is the star. Hallelujah. He's the one in who we live and move and have our being. If it had not been for Bethlehem, if it had not been for God, where would we be tonight? Shake us up, Lord. Shake us up. It's more than Madison Avenue. It's more than Christmas gifts. It's more than candy. It's more than nuts around a tree. Hallelujah. He came to save us from our sin. Woo! Hallelujah. When they saw, and these were people who were strangers. These were people, they weren't the priests. They weren't Levites. They weren't psalmists. They were outside. And you know, sometimes I wonder if we, go, if we get too used to this, where well, you got to have a preacher pump you up and preach it just right in order for you to get excited. God going to say, okay, you be like that. I'm going to get somebody outside. I'm going to get somebody that don't even know my name. Hallelujah. I'm going to reach out to people that don't even know who I am. Hallelujah. They'll appreciate it. They'll shout. They'll dance. They'll rejoice. You ain't got to stand up and put on a show for them. Hallelujah. They didn't even know who he was. But that was enough. They saw the star. They, hey, that's the Messiah. It wasn't even their Messiah. But they went on a journey. A two-year journey. To seek him out. To search him out. And when they came to the Christ child, they didn't come empty handed. Sometimes if we're not careful, we always come to God with our hands out. Lord, Lord bless me. Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. God, I, here I am with all my troubles. God, here I am with all my concerns. Lord, you promised in your word you do this for me. You do that for me. Listen, friend, what about coming to church and saying, God, I didn't come for myself, but I come for you tonight. I want to bring you some myrrh. I want to give you some frankincense. I want to give you some gold. Hallelujah, because you've been good to me all year long when I should have been in the hospital, when I should have been in my deathbed. You reached out and touched me when I didn't even deserve your goodness hallelujah I got something I want to I want to give to you I've got something I want to do hallelujah praise God we are so Woo. we if we're not careful if we don't shout, if we don't praise him, the very people of his name, the very people filled with his spirit, if we get so used to this, God will look for somebody else and bring them from a far country. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not worried about what I'm going to get for Christmas. No, no. I'm worried about, Lord, what can I give you? I want to give you myself. I want to give you my heart. I want to give you my mind. I want to give you my life. I want to give you more and more of me. I want to give you the gold, the frankincense and the myrrh. Hallelujah. Because believe it or not, brothers and sisters, they that are wise are still seeking him. They that are wise are still searching for him. They that are wise are still worshiping him. Hallelujah. I don't even know if they knew all about how to worship, but I knew they felt something on the inside. Hallelujah. That drove them. Woo. Please don't take for granted. 
what God has given us. The greatest gift of all is salvation. We get, you know, sit down for a minute. Y'all making me nervous. <laughs> we are so close Whew. to the coming of the Lord. Every year brings us closer and closer. And that word of God is becoming fulfilled all around us. And then the Bible says, amen, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as you can see the day approaching. You can see it coming. You hear it in the news. It's all around us. The signs are all around. The star of prophecy is shining brighter than it's ever shined before. And we walk around and we don't even notice it. Hallelujah. We just stand in awe and wonder, could it be this year? Could it be next year? Hallelujah. Somebody prophesied, said it was going to be in 2013. This was a particular year for whatever reason, but this was going to be the year. 2013. I read that in, a, in an article. 2013. Jesus was coming back. 2013. And in 2012, I checked myself because I wanted to go. I want to be ready. 2013, something about the number 13, the number 13. Oh, Lord. This going to be the year. This going to be the year. This going to be the year. Amen. Now they're saying it's 2014. They're already predicting things. They're already saying things that, that the, the whole health care system that's being set up, the affordable health care, the whole system, all that stuff that's in it that people ain't reading about. They said that somewhere in all that paperwork, there's this thing called a chip that everybody's going to have to get. Amen. To take all your information. You don't have to use credit cards no more. You don't have to hey, get, get all your information someplace else. It'll all be embedded in your hand. This little chip, it's already, already processed and already ready to go. 2014 going to be the year. 2014, that's going to be the year. That's going to be the year North Korea going to go off. They going to go off. China going to get mad at Japan and, t and take land. They say claim to theirs and it's gonna just going to blow up. The Middle East is going to blow up. It's going to go crazy. And we just, wow. And wonder. Friend, the signs are right. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. I don't know when Jesus is coming. I know he could come tonight. I know he could come tonight. And friend, here we are. We, we, the people of his name. See, everybody don't have the revelation. Everyone don't have the Holy Ghost. But God handpicked us. He brought us in. He brought us in. We didn't search for him. He searched for us. He gave us this marvelous truth. Hallelujah. How can we sit here like, thank God I showed up. You ought to be glad I came to church tonight. I'm sitting here and I'm looking pretty. Friend, preach it, preach it. No, I'm not going to preach you to stir you up. I saw the star. I saw the star. Hallelujah. And I've got joy unspeakable and it's full of glory. And I'm going to shout if I got to shout by myself. I'm going to worship if I got to worship by myself. Hallelujah. Jesus has been good to me. Hallelujah. Now be careful. Be careful because old Herod, old Herod wants you to sit down. Oh, King Herod wants you to keep still. Oh, King Herod wants you to be all sophisticated. Don't get too excited. Amen. Don't get carried away. Just sit there. You tired. You sleepy. You don't feel good. You've been Christmas shopping. Your football team didn't win today. So you just sit there and mully grub over your situations and over your problems and over your all this and that. Just bog yourself down. But whatever you do, don't get loose in the Holy Ghost. Don't get free in the Holy Ghost. That devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to praise him. I come to worship. I come to bring him gifts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whew. 
when they saw, when they saw all the star, it, it wasn't just any old star. It wasn't just some any old star. It wasn't like any star in the universe. Jesus is not like any other man that ever lived. Hallelujah. He's totally different. He's in a class all by himself. Folks out there saying it doesn't matter what you believe. There are many roads to heaven. No, they're not. I heard somebody on YouTube, a, a very well-known entertainer, getting on YouTube talking about all this division in Christianity. Everybody need to just quit and get along. You can't judge this person and you can't judge that person. Everybody's got their own way to God. No! There's only one Lord. There's only one faith. There's only one baptism. There's only one way to be saved. There's only, whoo, hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. Hallelujah. Praise God. That old lion king. Hallelujah. He wants to make you think that it really is not important. It really makes no difference. It makes all the difference. Jesus said, I am the door. Hallelujah. If you enter in, you can find pasture. You can find nourishment for your soul. But if anybody try to get in any other way the same as a liar he's a thief he's a deceiver he's a false prophet hallelujah jesus is the star he is the star hallelujah he's the one that shines brighter than the noonday sun jesus is what it's all about Glory to God. Hallelujah. I can't just sit down in a service and wait for somebody to inspire me. Jesus inspires me. Hallelujah. I don't need to hear nobody say anything. I don't hear to hear no special song. Hallelujah. Jesus is my inspiration. Glory to God. He is the star. I thank God. Do you know what happened today? Do you know what happened today? Souls went in that baptistry today. Souls got their sins washed away today. Multitude of sin have been covered by the blood of Jesus. Don't ever get used to that. Don't get used to that. Somebody's getting baptized. Oh, well, that's good. Uh-uh. Somebody's getting baptized. What? Are you serious? Somebody's getting, whoa, hallelujah. The devil lose again. The devil. Hallelujah. Take that devil. Praise God. This is glorious. This is magnificent. This is outstanding. Hey! Imagine, imagine acting like this in church. Some people are not used to this. This makes people nervous. But I'm gonna tell you something. If you if you can't if you can't get with this right here, you're gonna be uncomfortable in heaven. Cause I'm telling you, man, when I get to that celestial city. When this mortal puts on immortality, I'm not going to break a sweat. I'm not going to get tired. My body's not going to ache. I'm going to shout. I'm a glory to God. I'm just warming up. I'm just rehearsing for what's to come. Exceeding. Great. <laughs> Joy. Joy. <laughs> Joy. Joy. He's my exceeding great. Joy. 
you get excited about a football game, I get excited about Jesus. <laughs> you get excited about American Idol, I get excited about Jesus. You jump and shout over something that's going to burn and pass away, but I, I get excited. Hallelujah about Jesus. Somebody say joy. <laughs> I'm not I'm not talking about joy. I'm talking about exceeding great joy. I'm talking about that kind of joy. I'm talking about the kind of joy that get on other people's nerves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, why she always got to be acting like that? Why can't he keep still? Why he got to be running around? Gets on my nerves. Good, I'm going to get on your nerves some more. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about exceeding. Great. Joy. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes we are just, sometimes we get affected by tradition. Old, cold, dead church tradition. And we think being spiritual means you got to be all serious, straight face, not moving. That's a dead church. The Bible says he coming back for those that are alive. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I don't understand. Some of you, even tonight, because everybody's not on the same page. Some of you won't budge. I, I see you. You're not going to budge. You just say, well, you know what? They, that ain't my personality. I'm just not like that. I'm just, you know. That's not my personality, brother. You know, I, I'm going to do all that stuff. The Bible says, lift your hands in the sanctuary. I ain't li I ain't li the Bible says, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. The Bible says, that's what the Bible says. That's the Bible. That's what the book says. He said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Isn't that what the book says? Isn't that what the book says? So it has nothing to do with your personality. Has nothing to do with what you've been through. You know, you can shout yourself out of depression. You can shout yourself out of sickness. You can shout yourself out of the mullet groves. If you don't feel like praising him, praise him anyhow. Give him the sacrifice and watch and see. God will come down from heaven and he'll touch you where you are. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Joy. Joy. Exceeding. Great joy. Joy beyond our capacity. Joy beyond our mindset. Joy beyond what we're used to. God wants to take you up to a higher level of experience in him. Exceeding great. Hallelujah. Exceeding great joy. Powerful joy. Anointed joy. Hallelujah. When 
they saw the star. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Hold on a minute, let me tell you something. When you, listen, when you do what's been example for you in the scripture, I believe we need to stay in the book. Amen. If we do, listen, if we do what they did, we will get what they got. Amen. Amen. If it's in the book, I want it. If it's in the book, I want to do it. If it's in the book, I want to live it. I want, hey, I want it. I want joy. Now listen. Woo, shut That same Jesus that they saw in the manger, the same young child they saw in the house, that same Jesus that they saw go up in the clouds is going to come back in like measure. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, it's expedient for me to go away. I have to go away. No, Lord, we don't want to live without you. God, we got to have you in our sight. I got to have you right close to me. He said, no, 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 you don't understand. It is better for me to go away. No, no, I can't imagine. I can't imagine living a day without you, God. We've walked with you. We've talked with you. We've ate dinner with you. You washed our feet. God, you've been intimate with us. Whatever you do, whatever you do, don't leave us. Please don't leave us. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in the invisible God? We're in the same way. Believe also in me. Though you can't see me, don't mean that I'm not there. But this is what I will do. I pray the Father to send you another comforter. He sent me to comfort you. But I can only be here in flesh for a little while. But it's better that I go that the comforter might come. He said, I won't leave you comfortless. I will come to you. It was impossible for the ghost to come while the person was still there. <laughs> the person had to die first and be taken away before the ghost could come. And then he said, when you come to receive the ghost, when you come to receive the spirit, when you come to receive the comfort, he said, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation with joy. You're not going to get it with your face full of frown. You're not going to get it with that, okay, Lord, here I am. Do me. It's not going to work like that. You got to come <laughs> with joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because it is, it is the greatest gift. It is the greatest gift that this world has ever experienced. He said in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. How are you going to receive it? 
with joy, with joy, with joy. Hallelujah. So forget about all of the stuff that's going on in the world. Forget about all your pressures and all of your problems. I need some joy. I need to feel his spirit. If you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, you need to make your way down here to the middle of this crowd because there's Holy Ghost joy all through this area. If you, if you want to feel the Holy Ghost, if you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, you need to come on. You need to come on. Come on and join us. Come on and join us. If you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, if you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, come and find your place among this crowd right now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I hear that king. I hear that old flesh king talking. I hear Herod talking. I hear him. That old Herod. You know what Herod's saying? Let me tell you what Herod. I hear Herod. Herod's saying, you don't need to go up there. You don't need to go up there. Stay right here. God can touch you right here. Stay right here. You don't need to go up there. God's everywhere. You ain't need to go up there. Stay right here where you at. Don't move. Don't move. <laughs> That's Herod talking. Stay where you are. God's not limited to that preacher. Stay where you are. Don't go up front. Do not go. And you know what? Sometimes we do what the devil wants us to do a whole lot easier than we do what God wants us to do. But that devil is a liar. He don't want you to have what God wants for you. I believe it's time. I believe this is the season. Hallelujah. God wants to fill souls overflowing with the spirit. Somebody say, shut up, devil. When the wise men went to find Jesus, that old king said, when you find him, you come back to me. After they left Jesus, the Bible say they went back home another way. <laughs> Woo, friend, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you're going to walk out of here another way. Hallelujah. You're not going to be the same anymore. He'll give you power. He'll give you an anointing. He'll give you purpose. With joy. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you ready? You got joy? You got joy? You got joy? Somebody said, I got joy on the inside, but my face don't show it. You better let your face show it. Hallelujah, you better put a smile on your face. Hallelujah, because this is the greatest thing that could ever happen. Woo! Y'all ready? They're going to they're gonna worship God. We're going to join in with them. This is what I want us to do. Hallelujah. That's what I want us to do, everyone together. I want you to just find your place in worship and begin in your own way. Worship God. It's very important. That when you worship God, forget about yourself. Forget about who's around you. Hallelujah. While you are praying, while you are praying, people all around you are going to be worshiping with you. Somebody beside you, behind you, in front of you are, is going to be speaking in tongues. You'll be able to hear people all around you speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't let that be afraid. Don't be afraid of that. But I want you to lift up your voice. Huh? And let the Holy Ghost have its way. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh. The Holy Ghost. 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 With joy. Open your mouth and worship him. Hallelujah. 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 Speak it out. Hallelujah. Speak it out. Hallelujah. Speak it out. Hallelujah. 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 
There it is. You don't know there it is. There it is. Hey, hey. Cause you don't hey. Know oh, hey. You don't know Open your mouth. Oh, no, 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 no. Go, 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 go. Woo. Even when I'm faithless, Lord, you are faithful. When the time of yes. Rejoice! Rejoice! I refuse to let the rocks cry out. Because you don't know what the Lord has, what he's done for. Receive it! Open your mouth! Speak Speak it out! What the Lord has. God has been good to you. Yeah. Yes, he has. Mine, mine, mine. Yeah. Yes, he has. I can't tell it all. I get so full sometimes that I, I gotta shout. Yeah.
Jeremiah said it's like fire. 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 Shut up in my bones. Shut up in my bones. Shut up in my bones. Yeah. Jeremiah said it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. Shut up in my bones. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremiah said it's like fire. Burn it with the Holy Shut up in my bones. Shut up in my bones. Yeah. Yeah.